Hi, I'm Chad Saley with Comp Health, and I'm sitting down again with Dr. Andrew Wilner, a neurologist and the author of the book, The Locum Life. And uh, glad to have you with me today, today, Dr. Wilner. We're going to talk a little bit about work-life balance. Thanks, Chad. It's a pleasure to be here. So first off, maybe let's just uh, set the stage a little bit for, for work-life balance and what that even means in today's day and age. Um, maybe talk a little bit about how the, just the process of being a physician and what it means to be a physician has changed from when you first went to med school to maybe what's happening today as, uh, as new doctors are entering the workforce. Oh yeah, I think, well, I, I thought a lot about that when I was writing the article and it's really uh, different. When I trained, there was no such thing as work-life balance. It did not exist. Those words did not exist for physicians. And in fact, if you mentioned during an interview that, you know, as a resident or fellow that you were interested in, you know, work-life balance for your family, you would never get hired. Uh, that, and that's not just my opinion. I spoke recently with a chairman of the neurology department at another university. He said that was the kiss of death. And if you mentioned work-life balance, you were out. It was expected that it was a privilege to become a physician. There weren't that many of us. You had to be, you know, the top of your class. There weren't that many uh, positions in medical school and it was a privilege and you were expected to devote 100% of your life to becoming the best physician you could be for as long as you lived and were able to practice. And if on the side you could have a family or a hobby, that was okay but it was certainly not anything that anyone was interested in professionally, that medicine is challenging, that you know, for any single individual to assimilate the necessary information and skills, it's a full-time job. And anybody that thinks it's less than a full-time job, like a woman who wants to have a family, for example, was not welcome because they are not gonna be able to contribute 100%. Well, needless to say, there's a downside to that approach and uh, things have really changed. Work-life balance now is demanded by the younger generation. I'm a latecomer to work-life balance. It uh, kind of dawned on me when I didn't have a family and I was over 50 that maybe that was something I ought to turn my attention to. Uh, and so I discovered locum tenens where I was able to choose how much work I wanted, where, in other words, within my profession and my other work, which was developing my own uh, uh, profession as a writer and also my social skills and trying to create some uh, balance uh, with the humanities and just my own personal socialization. And locum tenens allowed me to do that, whereas the jobs I was in before, always ask you to do more and more and more. You never do enough. And the hospital runs 24 seven. You know, you could literally live in the hospital. You never run out of things to do. There's no, there's no Miller time, you know, when you uh, work in the hospital or, or even a clinic, you know, our office, we're always there. Oh, help out, you know, there's more and more and more emergency work in, more and more and more. And of course the administrators like it, the more you do, but uh, it didn't leave time for uh, much else. What do you think brought on that that shift or that change? And you know, why do you think more physicians are de demanding that now compared to uh, when you were first starting in your career? Well, I'll preface by saying I don't know the answer, and I can speculate that you know when I was uh, a student, a physician really uh, held enormous respect. Uh, more than anyone else in society. I mean, in my world, if you were a physician, you were a scholar, you know, you were a pillar of the community, uh, you made more money than you needed, um, and you donated your extra time to charity. Most doctors in those days uh, would work a half a day a week at a community clinic and not get paid. They would also take a half day a week and go play golf because they made enough money and that was part of it. Well, a lot of those things have changed. Physicians are still respected, but I, they're not quite on the pedestal that they used to be. 
Uh, their incomes are still good, but comparatively speaking, if you look at hours worked and income, there are many, many other professions where you can actually earn more per unit effort than you earn as a uh, physician. And so if your goal is to be self-sufficient, I say most physicians do not earn more money than they need anymore. As the prices of housing and private school have gone up, I think physicians, might, when I was a kid, used to have more money than they needed. But now they don't. In fact, they don't have the money. Plus they have debt. You know, there are physicians that graduate school with a half a million dollars of debt. And uh, you know, how are they gonna pay that off? And many physicians are now employees and not self-employed. In fact, more than half of physicians are employees and no longer self-employed. So I think, you know, it's not just one thing, but also millennials in general seem to uh, have incorporated work-life balance as, as a demand. You know, I mean, even the tech companies, you know, if you want to go work for Google, uh, you want to go work for Apple, you know, there's supposed to be a pinball machine, you know, around and couches and free food and flexible schedules. Um, be, the rigidity that we had, um, it was almost military, you know, in the training that we had, we were on call every other night, you know, you didn't take sick days, you showed up unless you, when I was a resident, you showed up. You did not miss a day that you were supposed to be there between us because you would dump your work on a fellow resident. And between us, unless you were hospitalized, you showed up. And I showed up, you know, with a fever. I showed up when I wasn't feeling well to see my patients and then go home and collapse because that's what you did. And uh, nobody does that anymore. It's like, oh, I'm sick. I'll take a sick day. Uh, the, the devotion to career as being... Uh, completely in another category and everything else uh, is, is different. So what would you say, and I, and I think it's funny to think about, I think a lot of times you'd think, oh, well, of course, work-life balance is, is better. I mean, like, it sounds like there were no positives to, to the way that you were doing medicine back then, but I know you and I have had past conversations about this. So maybe talk a little bit about both the positives of kind of that full dedication and 100% being on, um, as well as kind of maybe the, the positives of leaning more towards better work-life balance and, and things like that. Well, from a career perspective, you know, being a physician, becoming a competent physician, you can really never work hard enough. And there's always more to learn. There's always uh, ways to refine your skills. You learn from every patient. And one of the reasons that I, you know, some people my age retire. And one of the reasons I haven't retired is because I feel like I'm finally getting competent in what I do, finally getting good at it. It takes a lifetime to become really good. It's a hard, hard job. So by working 100%, throwing yourself into it, you can really develop the necessary skills to become a, uh, you know, a William Osler, a superior clinician. Uh, but you make a lot of sacrifices along the way. And whether other people appreciate it or not isn't necessarily that important. You know, you know that you've delivered the best care possible. And when I see a patient, I want to feel that. And, you know, and I do a lot of studying in my spare time so that when I see a patient, I know that I've given them the best that they could get anywhere, you know, in 2020, based on, uh, you know, our human ability to deliver care. Downside is that's a lot of work. That's a lot of work to do that. Of course, work-life balance, you know, families are important. And a lot of those uh, physician marriages in the old days didn't work out. Um, and part of it was, you know, and children, uh, they never saw their, do you know, their father. Usually it was the father who was away from home. It was normal to miss, you know, kids' recitals and concerts. And I mean, that was just part of it that, you know, you get a phone call, I got to go and off you'd go. And uh, that's, that was the way, that was expected. And some families could adjust to that. Now, it's like military families, you know? It's like, oh, got a call, got to go, time to go to Iraq, see you in six months, can't really tell you where I'm going. You know, some families can deal with that and some, some can't, you know, they have a tough time. 
So, but that's pretty tough on anybody. And so the idea of having a more balanced world, the other aspect of that, and I've always believed this, is that as much as it's great to put 100% of your energy into one area, uh, that's always been difficult for me in the sense that I have another sort of uh, need of being a, a writer. I like to write. And I think I've always felt that having a a balance, some other pursuit actually can enrich both. So that you become a better writer and you become a better physician by sort of having this other window into the world, whether it's a, you know, a, a hobby or being an artist or, uh, you know, even working closely with your, with your family. So sometimes just being too tight in the box may not be the, the best thing because humans are multi-dimensional uh, people. And, uh, as a physician, you do have to interact and appreciate uh, other sort of the way people are, which may not be the way you want them to be, but you know, people kind of are. So the more you uh, learn that, I think the better you can communicate, establish a rapport, um, what they call the therapeutic alliance. You know, I, I work very hard in my county hospital to connect with people who, if I met them on the street, I probably wouldn't make that effort. You know, they're just not the people I would normally socialize with for one reason or another. But in the hospital, I need to connect with them so that I can help them because I want to. And uh, that's, that's what they want from me. You know, that's, that's why they're, they're there. That's what I can contribute to their lives. So uh, I think being multidimensional and it requires some space. So locums is a way, one way to get that space. Academic medicine historically was another way to get that space, although academic physicians are under more and more pressure just to produce, you know, patient care rather than to sort of explore the unknown, which is really what they're, they're good at. Uh, so it's hard to find that space. So maybe you touched on this. Talk a little bit more about how locum tenens has helped with work-life balance and kind of what what benefits working locums kind of brings for that side of your life? Right, so the, the beauty of locums is that you can work, for me, 100%, throw myself into it just like in the old days, but all of the contracts are time limited. And you know, when you can see the light at the end of the tunnel, you can focus better. You know, we talked earlier about COVID. Well, suppose we knew that June 1, it was over. I mean, wouldn't it be so much easier today to deal with it? You say, okay, I just got to count my days. We're going to do this, but June 1, we're all back to normal. But not knowing when it ends makes it hard. And the beauty of a locum's contract is it ends. So I can throw myself into my work until June 1. And then it's like, okay, July's mine. And I'm going to write a book or I'm going to travel to Southeast Asia I'm going to make an underwater film. I can do whatever I want because I've done, you know, I've kind of answered my calling. But now I have some time to answer other, you know, to address other passions that I have. And the other beauty of that, it's all up to me. Nobody says, Dr. Wilner, you have to work from January to June 1. I'm the one that says I want to work from January to June 1. And the psychology of that is even though it's the same six months, it's a lot easier if you're the one who decides to do it than if somebody tells you that you have to do it. Now, you know, that's just human nature. So being your own boss, which traditionally was a very important thing for physicians, a reason many of us chose to go into medicine in the first place, that's becoming more and more elusive right? I mentioned earlier, more than 50% of physicians now are employed. The number, the last figure I saw for solo doctors was 17%. And that's shrinking, you know, every hanging up a shingle, hey, I'm Dr. Wilner, come see me. That is, you know, shrinking every day. So locums, you are still employed in the sense that, you know, you have a contract, someone's paying you for that period of time, but you do have the ability to manipulate that you know, if you want to work 365 days a year, you can. If you want to work one month a year, you can. Um, and so you can even choose which state you want to work in. You can choose what, you know, depending upon what's available. And right now there's a whole lot available. 
so availability, if you're available, there's probably a position available, you know, for, for you. Great. That's a, that's, I think it's a great examples and uh, really highlighting the way that locums works positively there for work-life balance. Uh, thanks again, Dr. Wilner. We always appreciate sitting down with you and uh, hearing your insights. Thanks very much, Chad. It was fun.